Good morning. Good morning. So, have you guys ever had to be in the position before where you felt like you've had to hide your real feelings? Like, uh, for example, uh, I remember when I was celebrating Christmas with my extended family one year. Um, you know, it's one of those where we're all together, like cousins, aunts, uncles, grandpa, grandma. We're all together, and we're all, like, taking turns opening something from everybody. I was probably, like, 11 or 12 at the time, so I was, like, 6th grade, probably. Where are my 6th graders at? All right. All right. So I was your guys' age. Um, and we were all sitting around uh, in a circle in the living room, and we were all kind of, like, you know, opening gifts. Well... Uh, my brother opens a gift from our cousins that is one of those like uh, do you guys remember those they're not real popular anymore but they're like these pillow things they're like plush pillows that were like almost like spandex as the cover and they were like little beads on the inside that were really like I don't even know what they're called but it was like the most comfortable thing ever and I like you could play with it it was in the shape of a soccer ball but you could be squished around and it, anyway I it's, those things are awesome so I see my brother open one for my cousins and I think you know, I got like five gifts here. I'm gonna open that one first and then I can rest on that pillow here on the floor while I'm opening my other ones. And so I get real excited. I'm like, oh, that's cool, bud. Like, that's awesome you got that gift. My turn? Okay. And then I start opening this gift and it was like, it, cause it was the same shape and everything. But inside the box, when I opened the gift, it was like socks and like a shirt. And I remember sitting there like, thanks guys. This is awesome, right? And it's one of those things like you, you, you don't want to really express your true feelings because they're not respectful and they're kind of ungrateful. And, and so you kind of hide them. But deep down, you're kind of disappointed or kind of feeling tricked or angry or whatever it is. How many of you guys have been in a situation before where you feel like you've not been able to really express your true feelings? Anybody else? Like, it's, it's one of those things that seems like it's so common in life, and I feel like we've, we've all felt like that. But here, here's the thing. Sometimes I feel like there's this unspoken thing where sometimes we feel that way about God, but we, we feel like we can't say anything. We, we've got stuff that, that we feel on the inside, but especially at church, we can't say any of those things out loud. Maybe, maybe it's because of what you were told um, maybe it's something you heard in church growing up that like you, you should just be grateful for who God is, right? We just saying about how great he is. So maybe you should just be more grateful or maybe you should just have more faith. And you were told that you can't say anything negative about God because that's a sin, right? Or, or that's just rude. You don't, you don't talk about God that way, right? It's disrespectful. And so there's certain, certain feelings of like anger or confusion or sadness that you feel towards God. And sometimes you feel like you can't express it because of what you were told you're supposed to feel and what you're supposed to say. Or maybe, maybe you hide those feelings because you think that God doesn't care about how you feel, right? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe he gave you just a list of do's and don'ts, right? Don't watch this on Netflix. Don't smoke. Don't drink. But do read your Bible. Do pray. Do go to church. And there's, there's this list of do's and don'ts. And so maybe you feel like God doesn't really care about what, what you feel, because it, what does it matter, right? You, you just, God set the rules and now you have to live by them, right? Or, or maybe, maybe you don't even know if you believe in God at all. Uh, may, maybe you, uh, you think scientifically like me and, and you, uh, you've been told some things in science class that make you doubt God's existence. And you, there's things that you don't see that line up correctly and so that causes doubt. But you feel like you can't express those doubts. You have to kind of hide those feelings because no one around you would understand how you feel. Or maybe, maybe you've gone through something really hard in your life. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe you've, you've been through a divorce with your parents. Maybe you've been through something really difficult and you feel angry at God. You feel like if he was truly real and if he was truly good, he wouldn't have allowed this to happen. And so maybe, maybe you have all kinds of feelings, because we all do, towards God, towards the church. But we feel like we can't really express them. We can't really be the real me, the real you, because that one, that, the real version of you is just not acceptable. And, and so we all wrestle with this where sometimes there's, there's a, a part of us that feels like we can't really be vulnerable. We can't really be who we are. We can't really express how we feel. And so we feel like everywhere we go, we're just hiding our feelings. We're hiding our hearts. We're hiding how we really feel about life 
about our family, about our friends, about God, about church. And that can be a difficult place to be. And so uh, when we look to the last words that Jesus said when he was on earth, you know, the, the best pieces of wisdom that he gave in his last few days uh, in doing his ministry on earth, we, we find that I think Jesus can relate a lot to those feelings, to what we're going through, because he himself went through them. In fact, this whole series that we've been going through has been, it's best for last. It's, it's the best pieces of wisdom that Jesus gave here on earth. It's after he's been with his disciples for three and a half years. So, so let me set up the scene for you. So, so Jesus has just finished the Last Supper. He's got done telling them, you know, what's going to happen, but it went over their heads because they didn't understand what he was saying. They thought it was like prophetic code or something, even though he was speaking plainly to them. And he, he talks about, you know, Jesus, how Peter's going to deny them. He washes their feet. He says, Judas, you can go. And Judas goes to betray him. You know, all this stuff is happening. And, and Jesus gets done with the Last Supper. And he knows what's about to happen. He knows that he's about to be arrested. And here's what he feels in those moments. It's like the quiet before the storm. You've ever gone outside right before it's supposed to rain and you see the dark blue like rain clouds off in the distance, but it's real calm. There's no wind yet. The water hasn't started falling. And maybe you can hear a rumble of thunder in the distance. It's that quiet before the storm. And Jesus comes out and, uh, and he, he says to his disciples, hey, let's, let's go and let's just pray for a while. So they go to the Garden of Gethsemane and, uh, and Jesus goes off on his own to pray. And you'd think that Jesus would, would come to that, that time of prayer and that quiet calm before the storm. And he would have said, you know, like be putting his cape on and getting ready, you know, the, the spandex and everything. Like, I'm here to save the world. I'm going to go die on the cross because this is what I came here to do. And I'm going to take care of my people. And I'm going to be the ultimate sacrifice. And God, I'm ready. Just send me. But that's not what he does. It's a little more transparent. and It's a little more real what he says. And I encourage you to read the whole chapter when we're done because we're only going to focus on one verse today. But there's a lot of good stuff in this chapter. So this is in Luke chapter 22, and this is what Jesus says in this prayer. He says in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Not at all what I would expect the Savior of the world to say in that moment. Instead of bravely walking towards the cross. He does get there, but in the quiet before the storm, instead of approaching it with courage and confidence and, uh, and bravery, he comes to that moment with vulnerability, honesty, and transparency. And he knows the suffering that's going to happen. And he's willing to accept it. But he says, God, if there is any other way, now's the time. <laughs> Clue me in here, because I don't want to do this. How many of you have seen The Passion of the Christ? If you've not seen that, that's okay. Uh, I would encourage you at some point in your life to watch that movie because it, it gets pretty detailed and the suffering that Jesus went through in this whole process. Like we talk about it in church, like his blood was shed for our sins, but literally, do you know what that looked like? It was painful. It was not fun. It was not something anybody would ever want to go through. And Jesus knows what's coming because it was common practice in the Roman Empire. He knew the death he was facing. He knew the shame he was facing. And so he's asking God to take it away from him, find another way, because it's not very exciting. But what does he say? Yeah, I want your will to be done, not mine. Uh, can I get a, a volunteer, a couple volunteers that are like strong, a couple guys maybe, you two right there. Um, if you want to help me out here, and around the corner here, I've got a, uh, a whiteboard. You guys want to help grab an, each, grab an end of it, each of you, and then kind of carry that up here for me? Um, the, the blank side facing the audience. Um, so, so in this moment, here's, here's what Jesus knows. is He knows that he's about to, to enter into the most suffering that he's ever suffered. Thanks, guys. You can bring it just like right here. And that'd be perfect. Thank you. Give these guys a hand. So strong. Awesome. 
So Jesus is, is in this moment. He knows what's coming. He knows that he is about to have an encounter the most suffering, the most pain he's ever gone through in his life. But, but that's just the physical. He knows he's also going to be publicly humiliated and shamed in front of everybody. You know that feeling where you're embarrassed in front of everybody in your class because, like, you farted when it was quiet or something like that? And, and you're like, you like, you turn red and there's this shame. Well, imagine that shame and embarrassment by, like, 20. And, and this is the shame that this cross represented. So there's the physical aspect, there was the emotional aspect and the shame, the reputation at stake. And then there was also his friends his disciples that he'd been pouring into for the last three and a half years that have followed him all the way. And they're about to abandon him. You guys know that where you, you need your friends the most and in your moment of need, they kind of leave you. This is what's happening to Jesus. So I want you guys to put yourself in that position. What are some of the things you would be feeling in that moment when you go to pray? Just, just natural emotions that you would have knowing all of that is going to happen. Fear. Fear. Okay. Good one. Okay. Who else? Shout it out. Just shout it out. Insecure. Insecure. Somebody else? Sadness. Sadness. What else? What would you be feeling? Defeated? What if you knew that your friends were about to abandon you? If it were me, I'd feel this. What was that? Alone. That's a good one. Anything else? How about betrayed? Feel like your friends just kind of stabbing you in the back? What about Judas who literally betrayed him? Anything else you can think of? Scared? We'll, we'll put that one there with fear. It's good. Good answers. Depressed, Depressed maybe? Man, I just poured my whole life into these people for the last three and a half years. And not only have they abandoned me, but also all the people that I've been teaching to, trying to show who God is, want to kill me. Yeah, that'd be a little bit depressing. So I want you to put yourself in those shoes. These are the things that he was feeling, probably. I mean, if, if I were in that position, those are definitely some of the things I would be feeling. You guys have said those are some of the things you would feel. You'd be afraid because you don't want to have to go through that. You'd be feeling hurt and sad because of what's about to happen, right? You'd feel alone for sure. Jesus is the only one that gets it. And so when we are in those positions, sometimes we feel like we can't express that this is what we're actually feeling. But if you read that chapter... Jesus is absolutely not wanting to have to go through with this. He's looking for any other way. He, he, he just, he, he's so stressed to the point that his sweat is like drops of blood. That's, that's how anxious he is about this. Maybe that would have been another one to put down as well. But he knew what God's plan was. And he trusted him to carry it through. How often, when we feel these things in some situation that we're going through, do we remember and have trust that God's plan is bigger than ours? In the midst of feeling this way. Because a lot of times we feel like faith is having trust and overcoming these emotions. But in reality, faith is having trust despite these emotions. In spite of feeling angry, sad, confused, depressed, we trust that God's plan is bigger than ours. And here's what I want you guys to take away from this week. Is that you can be real about what you feel and still trust in Jesus. How comforting is that? You can be real about what you feel and still have trust in Jesus. In fact, small groups are the perfect outlet for you to express what you really feel and not just the things that you're supposed to say when you're at church. This, this is where life change happens because in this moment, Jesus could have chosen to allow those emotions to overtake him. 
And what would, what would it look like today if he had walked away from the cross? We wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't have a reason to gather together. Jesus had trust in spite of feeling these things. And he chose to trust God in the midst of them. You can be real about what you feel and still trust in God. So uh, how, how would we follow Jesus' example in this prayer? First, uh, we have to get real with God about how we feel. Uh, so if you're like me and you feel like, well, if he knows me, then he knows what I'm feeling. So what's the point of saying it, right? But there is something that happens within us when we confess our feelings to God and to each other. And we have a safe place to actually vent and talk about how we feel because that opens the door and the opportunity for encouragement. When we are real, then people know how they can encourage us. When we're not real, we get left alone in these feelings and they just grow. So we have to be real with God about how we feel. Secondly, we have to be willing to trust and follow God in spite of how we feel. And that takes practice. It's not easy. It's not like, it, it seems easy when we read about this from anybody, but especially when Jesus says, but not my will, your will, right? We read that and we think, oh, well, that was so easy for him. That's incredibly difficult. So just trust and know that, that it will take time. Keep going. You can be real about what you feel and still trust Jesus. So as you guys get ready to go into your small groups, I want, I want you to think about this question. What's run, one reason you have uh, for be, having a hard time being honest with God about how you feel? What's one reason you have a hard time being honest with God about how you feel? I want to pray, and you guys will be dismissed into your small groups.